Hi, so in this video, I want to continue uh, talking about the Diffie-Hellman Merkel protocol. And in particular, uh, what I thought I would do is talk about um, what we call a man in the middle attack or meat in the middle, or man in the middle attack, actually, but I think it's uh, sexist to say man in the middle, a person in the middle attack. Um, but we'll talk about the uh, how you can actually attack the Diffie-Hellman protocol, the Diffie-Hellman Merkel protocol, uh, with the the man in the middle attack, MITM, which sometimes we recognize. Uh, so again, we're going to start off with our with our usual parties, uh, and uh, start off with Alice on one side and Bob on the other. Now, if you recall, uh, when I first talked about the Diffie-Hellman protocol, I referred to this kind of in between person as Eve, as uh, somebody who might be eavesdropping on the channel and trying to figure out maybe what Alice and Bob are communicating, and in this. Uh, what I'm going to talk about now is what happens if you have an adversary um, who is not only eavesdropping, but can actually potentially modify the messages being sent back and forth between Alice and Bob. Uh, could that person in turn uh, try to uh, compromise the security of that protocol? And it turns out that if somebody can modify the traffic in between Alice and Bob, actually a malicious uh, insider who can actually modify traffic, and we'll call that insider, how about Mallory? So Mallory, we'll see Mallory can modify traffic, and then again, um, let's give Mallory some some hair, um, and uh, you know, uh, let's give her some eyes, and uh, in this case, we'll assume that Mallory can actually has is actually modifying the content, so she's actually actively involved. So we'll give her some some hands to show that she's actually actively involved in in doing bad things. Uh, to the communication happening between Alice and Bob. All right, so what's going to happen? How is how is Mallory going to affect the communication between Alice and Bob? Well, let's imagine that Alice starts off, and, and we're going to have the usual setup with Diffie Hellman, where uh, there's there's a, a generator G for a prime group P, uh, and and uh, you know in P uh, in this case you know we're interested in arithmetic mod uh, the multiplicative group mod P, so ZP star. Uh, and Alice, as usual, picks a value, and, and she's going to uh, she's going to pick a value um, uh, lowercase a um, from uh, between uh, zero and p minus one, and then she computes uppercase a, which is just basically g to the lowercase a mod p. Okay, and she sends this value. She's trying to send this value to Bob. Let's say she sends it this way. Now, let's say Mallory says, aha, I see that Alice and Bob are trying to communicate together and they want to have a, they want to come up with a shared secret. So what if, and, and we're going to assume that Mallory is pretty powerful, Mallory in this case is going to be able to actually modify the content. So Mallory is going to come up with a value, and she's going to pick a little value M on her own. Okay, and uh, M is going to, again, it's going to be from 0 to P minus 1. Okay, and then she's going to compute, uh, let's say, capital M, which is equal to um, g to the lowercase m mod p. Okay, and she's going to send, instead of sending a, she's going to intercept a and replace it with m. Okay, now Bob, I mean, he doesn't, he can't tell if it's a or m, it just, they both look like a random number to him. He doesn't know what, what the difference is. He's going to see this m, he's going to think, oh, this, is, this must be coming from Alice. Okay, and so Bob you know, is going to kind of do the protocol as he normally would, and he's going to compute his value, which is going to be um, you know, lowercase b, uh, which goes from 0 to p minus 1. And by the way, you know, if you, this might be a good place for you to just pause the video, see if you can figure out what the rest of the attack is on your own, given this one inside. If not, um, you know, watch the rest of the video. Um, and then Bob is going to compute from this lowercase b, he's going to compute uppercase b equal to g to the lowercase b mod p. Okay, and he's going to send B over. Okay, and just to actually maybe make the notation a bit easier to, to remember, I'm going to actually have, I'm going to kind of make a small change here to my notation. And instead of saying that Mallory picked M, I'm going to imagine she picked M sub A, lowercase M sub A, and she sent lowercase or uppercase M sub A. She computed lowercase M sub A. 
um, and then computed uppercase m sub a from that and then sent uppercase m sub a to Bob. Okay, And then uh, when she saw Bob's message back to Alice, let's say she did the same thing. She computed uh, a lowercase m sub b from uh, 0 to p minus 1. And she computed uppercase m sub b Okay, from uh, is g to the m sub b mod p. And let's say she sent this m sub b to Alice. Now, what is Alice going to compute? Well, Alice sees, remember the way that Alice works, is she sees m sub b and she's going to compute. She's not going to know that she's receiving m sub b. For all she knows, she's getting a value b back from Bob. She has no idea that it's been modified by Mallory. And so Alice will go ahead and she's going to compute, simply compute um, this value. Uh, at, you know, she's going to take m sub b and raise it to the eighth power. She's going to compute m sub b to the a, which in this case is basically equal. And remember, m sub b was uh, g to the lowercase m sub b. So g to the lowercase m sub b. Uh, raised to the eighth power, so we multiply the exponent to g to the m to b times a mod p, and that's her version of the secret secret. Okay, and likewise, uh, what is Bob's version going to be? And, and again, you can you can figure this out as well, um, and pause and try to figure it out. But if if you want to get the spoiler, well, Bob he computes basically he takes what he thinks of as a, which he's really got an m sub a because Mallory's interfered, and he raises that to the bth power. Okay, and m sub a is basically, we, we said it's g to the m sub a uh, raised to the bth power. And so he's really getting you know, g to the m sub a times b. And this is all done mod p. Sometimes I'll, I won't write the mod p down. I mean, it's just because of, of convenience. Um, but you should always assume that it's there kind of implicitly. And now let's think about what's happening here. So Alice has m sub b, g to the m sub b times a, and Bob has g to the a, m sub a times b. Now Mallory can actually compute both of these things on her own. Why she can, it turns out Mallory can actually compute uh, some things of her own. So she knows m sub b and she knows m sub a. She sees a from Alice, so let's look what happens when she computes. Um, so let, let's think about what's going to happen here, right? So she's going to be able to take um, the the m sub a that she gets, or the value the value a that she gets from Alice, and then what is that value a? That's basically just g to the a that she got from Alice. And what if she raises that to the m sub b power? She knows m sub b because she came up with it, right? And that's equal to g to the g to the a to the m sub b, or g to the m sub. You can also write this as. Uh, g to the m sub b times a mod p, right? So she actually, Mallory knows the same shared secret as Alice. So she knows this value as well. And similarly, what you'll also notice is, is what else does Mallory know? Well, she can also compute, um, she knows, uh, she gets b from Bob, and, and Bob we have her g to the b. Mallory knows m lowercase m sub a because she picked that herself. So she picks g to the b times m sub a. Okay, and so she knows um, this value mod p as well. And uh, let's start to notice that well, she knows this value mod p, which is the same thing as what Bob computed. So in effect. What's really happened here is instead of Alice and Bob having a shared secret that nobody knows, in reality, Alice has a secret with Mallory and Bob also has a secret with Mallory. They might think, Alice and Bob might think the secret that they know to each other, but really Mallory knows there's really two secrets here, two truly secret values. Mallory knows them both. Uh, neither Bob nor Alice knows that Mallory knows them because Mallory has interfered with the protocol. So effectively what we've done here is, is shown how somebody who can actively interfere with the protocol, actually modifying the protocol messages and replacing them with their own, can interfere with, uh, with Diffie-Hellman. And so really Diffie-Hellman, 
um, or textbook Diffie Hellman, as people like to typically call it, is only secure against passive eavesdroppers. So, in other words, um, so Diffie Hellman is secure against passive eavesdroppers. Passive eavesdroppers, people who can only listen into the conversation and, and, and not really um, change anything. But if somebody can change anything, you do have somebody like a Mallory who can, who can actively interfere with the protocol, um, then Diffie-Hellman can be insecure. Versus an active adversary or an active uh, people, somebody being malicious who's actually modifying messages an active adversary. Um, and I should make one clarification. It, it, you know, when we say Diffie Hellman secure, it doesn't mean that we, we actually have no proof it's unconditionally secure. It's just that it's believed uh, to be secure. In fact, there's, there's always a possibility somebody will come up with an attack, although it's, it's unlikely at this stage. Uh, but for the most part, um, you know, when we talk about a cryptographic protocol being secure, we almost always mean except in basically one rare instance, we almost always mean that the protocol is believed to be secure, that, that the best known attack against it is still uh, not quite one that's feasible, and that's the case for Diffie-Hellman. The best known attacks on Diffie-Hellman are not quite feasible, uh, but uh, that doesn't mean one such attack doesn't exist. Uh, maybe that'll be a subject for a future video, but I'll thought I'll, I think I'll stop here and hopefully you understand now why Diffie-Hellman requires or is only secure against a, a passive adversary and not necessarily secure against, actually insecure rather, against an active adversary. Thanks a lot, and I will see you in the next video.